Okay, I've got a weird idea here that I'm going to run by you guys. So here is a phone with the level. And you can see, um, well hopefully, you can see it's level now. The reason I'm showing you that is because my driveway, let me see if I can, I don't know if you can tell on the camera. Let me ch change angles here. My driveway has a pretty steep, uh, steep slope. I'm going to put the phone on it. So hopefully we can see it. degrees and when it comes to the uh, two quarts um, I think they say we're supposed to bring it up to about th uh, 13 degrees so what my plan is is um, you know put the car at an angle on the driveway and jack it up all right so as you can see I got the car in the driveway on the slanted area doesn't look that that big of a angle we're gonna check it out real quick with my phone So you can see we're at about eight degrees. Okay, so right here, you can see I've got it at 13. And I've got just the back jacked up, as you can see. Now the front end did come up off the ground. But you can see it's barely off the ground. Okay, so as you can see here, what is that? It's like, say it's like five and a half depending on the angle okay I've got a 22 millimeter it's one of those protected uh, wheel uh, lug nuts fits perfect and I've already broken the torque before I jacked up the car uh, so all I've got to do is just uh, zip these off not to get in the way but I don't have any fancy equipment for cameras not really the camera person Okay, here's a shot with the uh, wheel removed and you can see here's the half shaft here what we're looking for is right underneath it so forgive me I'm gonna try to maneuver this where we can find it I'm trying to look for the best way right there that is what we are looking for so you can see here I have a long 3 8 extension. I don't know how, I think it's probably about 24 inches in length. And at the end of it I have a, let's see if we can zoom in here. This is a 17 millimeter uniwiggle. And I'm coming from uh, the front side, so here's the caliper. And we're going to break it loose. Okay, here is that 17 mil millimeter uniwiggle. I just got this at Harbor Freight. I didn't have a set of these uniwiggles, and I got it from here. Here's the drain plug itself. You can see it has a little O-ring on it. And let's see, I'm gonna try to show you. There it is without that. Now what I did is I got a little transfer pump right back here, and uh, it allows you to pressurize it. And then there's a hose, and that's my plan is to hopefully stick that in there and then just uh, pump the, the quartz in that way. Okay, again, here is the uh, two quartz that I'm going to be adding. And, you know, I don't know if this is synthetic. It doesn't say it, but a good rule of thumb is that I was always taught was to shake it. Uh, I used to be in the Air Force. I was a jet engine mechanic on 130s, and we used a synthetic oil, and they always told us you have to shake it. And so for fun, I, I called Mobile One and I asked them, I was like, hey, it doesn't say on your, your oil to shake it. What do you recommend? And they said, absolutely, you have to shake it because all the, the additives tend to settle at the bottom. So anyway, food for thought. Anyway, here's that transfer pump. Now the way this works, I'm just using a straight fitting. And then uh, obviously it has a pump here. You put your fluid in here and a cap, a little gauge allows you to read how much PSI you have and then uh, you just open the valve 
and it should push the fluid in. Okay, so here's the different fittings that it came with. Now, interestingly, this one right here, this may actually thread in to the where that filler plug was. I'm not 100% sure that it will, but it came with three of those style thread ends plugs. And then these angular things, which I don't think these are going to help me at all. So that's why I'm just using that uh, straight one. Okay, we're pouring the second cord in. And my car is a 2022. I picked it up uh, on October 1st of 21. I got to tell you, this is my first uh, Corvette, first Chevrolet actually. And car is great it's really refined I was uh, if you're watching this video you're probably a little concerned about the transmission but just driving it is so nice so smooth okay hard to see the fluid is a lot darker than I thought it's pretty dark stuff and it is it's hard to see on the camera I know but it's right to where my finger is so uh, we're almost at capacity It'll probably take another quart if I added it to it directions I just put this cap back on I noticed uh, when I was just pumping it dry that there was some leakage uh, so I put some fluid on the seal on the cap oh look at that and that's starting to come down the tube I don't know if you can notice it. it's about right here interesting okay. I don't know how many PSI I should put on there right now let's see what do I have on there looks like uh, wow it's a little over 10 PSI just a couple pumps so I don't think I'm gonna do more than that let me try I'm gonna try opening this nozzle slightly to see if that fluid will push yep didn't have a problem at all PSI is about 11 so I'm gonna put a couple more PSI in it then I'll take it over to the uh, to the car. Sorry about the shaky camera. Like I said, I don't have any camera equipment, and I'm only doing this to help you guys out. I'm not I'm not looking to be a YouTuber. Okay, so as you can see, I'm sitting outside of the car, and I have that tube again run from the driver's side or the caliper side. Let's see if I can find it. Sorry, and it's run. And this is a little shut off out here and you can see this is my right hand and I'm able to reach it just fine. This is the diaper material I was talking about. I have two of these stuffed under under here just because I didn't want to make a mess. So. A little conservative. I cracked it open and some of the fluid started uh, flowing in and I was watching the PSA eye drop so I decided to... Okay, and again, bear with me here. Let's see. Really, I can do this with one hand. And it should be flowing, but fortunately I can't. <laughs> I can't see anything because <laughs> I got my hands full here. But I do believe the PSI is dropping, so I think that's a good sign. So I'm going to shut this valve. And you can see the pressure dropped from, it had to be around 30 to just over 10. So, uh, and the fluid's about right here. It seems like when I started, I was up about here. So I probably got about three quarters of a quart in right now. Okay, I just pumped a little more pressure in it and I'm gonna hold this camera on the gauge so that as I open this, hopefully you'll be able to see that the pressure should be dropping off as it puts some of the fluid in there. Again, I apologize, I can't see. So in total, I probably up to this point have, I don't know, I'd say 10 to 15 minutes if I, if I hadn't been filming probably add another five to ten to stop and and film and get measuring tapes and stuff like that okay I'm gonna shake the container with the hopes that you can see 
the fluid sloshing around. It is right about here. I'd say I probably got to have at least a quart and a half in by now. And again, the whole reason I'm doing this is because I had a lot of questions. Uh, Brandon on one of the forums on Facebook who just been a great help. He's taken a lot of heat. People saying, oh, you don't need to do this. And well, that's fine. Don't do not do it if you don't want to. Um, I'm not telling you to. Uh, for me, oh, okay, we hit air. So I think we got it all in and you can see where my finger is. I'm looking and there's, it's totally bone dry. So we have not got any fluid leaking out. The only thing I'm not sure of is how much I don't know where the pickup is on this. I didn't think to look beforehand. Like, you know, that's just typical me. So, um, hopefully we have the majority of the two. So, here is the transfer pump. I just wanted to go over a couple things. So, obviously you have your pressure gauge. Here's your pressure relief before you remove the cap. And you can see that in the line, oh, here's the fitting. So, you just, just like an air fitting, you pull this back and then this piece will jet out. Um, here's your valve. And you can see there's a little bit of fluid there. And here, and then right there, and the rest of the line is completely bare. And then also I found the pickup was over on this side with the fill. And that's all the fluid that remains. And again, this was, you know, brand new fluid, so it's just a little darker than what I expected. Uh, but I would say less than a half ounce, probably more like a quarter ounce between what's here in this line and what's left in the uh, the container so all in all i'm pretty impressed with this and if i can find the link i'll send it to you it's uh, good enough left-handed but i put the plug in the uniwiggle and oh let's see here of course now i can't see either so look at that diaper material as you can see I'm glad I put that in there um, I don't remember seeing I never saw any fluid run out so I don't know if it ran out or if this came about when I pulled the, uh, the fitting out but not much but I'm certainly glad I stuffed this in there so even just using rags we find this is just what I had handy before I put the wheel on I forgot I put these uh, what are they called these mud flaps or just I don't know rock chip flaps whatever you call them I got these from 404 parts they have pretty good sales on there and anyway I really like them they don't stick out too far but it's enough where it's gonna help with any uh, hopefully rock chips going down the side The short I got is too short. I didn't notice how dirty my wheels are, so I apologize. I know I'm not representing very well. Okay, all done. So a couple final notes here, uh, just go back over to the, the pump, the transfer pump. Um, so what I did is I went ahead and just put some fluid in there, uh, it's just water, shook it around and um, you know put it in my 
my waste oil uh, containers and I'll dispose of it. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because cracking the, uh, the valve, make sure I don't have any pressure in there, cracking the valve um, is all you need. And I mentioned that because that little bit of fluid that I had on that, that diaper, that doggy diaper, um, at one point I had really opened it up and I think that there were, it was, when I was putting the wastewater into the oil container, it was really coming out of, out of there, like high, high speed, high pressure. So I think that that was just some uh, kickback from, you know, when you look in that drain hole, you'll see it's not just a hole into nothing. There's, there's a wall there. So I think it was hitting it and splashing out. So um, again, just crack it if you're gonna use the transfer fluid method and take your time. Total time, like I said, with filming, uh, I think with filming was probably more like 40 minutes. Uh, but from what I understand on that air box, you're gonna take, you know, three or four hours to get that out. I, again, I haven't done it, so that's just what I've heard people say. And lastly, um, you know, I'm not gonna put comments. I'm gonna disable comments because I think there's a lot of people that are gonna say, hey, you should never jack your car up on an angle like that. And you know, you're, you're probably right. Um, I, I feel like I have a pretty decent amount of, you know, just mechanical experience and, and common sense that um, if I felt like it was unsafe in any way, I would have stopped and said, you know what, screw this, I'm not going to do this. At least I'll do it on level ground if I'm going to do it. Uh, but at no point did I feel like um, it was unsafe. Like I said, the back wheel, I think you saw it was under six inches off the ground, off the ground. And, um, you know, with the, the pads, I have the Paragon uh, jacking pads, lift pads, whatever you want to call them. But once you have the car lifted up, the only thing I would have done differently was I probably should have put a jack stand. But since I wasn't getting under the car, I didn't do that. And that's the only reason why. So anyway.